Overture, hit the lights. This is it, the night of night. And oh, what heights will hit. On with the show, this is it. Welcome to Full Time. Uh, this is not the Full Time Award Show, even though there are a lot of award shows going on. And even though that's a fantastic idea, Full Time Awards. I have top fives. But perhaps one day I will have an award show. So I dressed the part. Didn't, it's, actually, it's, it's really, it's a, uh, it's a tuxedo shirt. So uh, yeah, I wanted to dress the part because we we're handing out awards. It was, uh, people are up in arms the last couple of days. You had the Emmy Awards on a Sunday. And then on a Monday, you had the FIFA Football Awards. People up in arms about who won them. I was in, up in arms a little bit. I, in the Emmys, there was a, sh- a show I've never... I'm, I'm sure it's good, Fleabag. And they did that with the marvelous Miss Mizell a couple years ago. People didn't watch this show. I guess this for Miss Mizell they did. But Fleabag, no one's seen. But the critics love it, so it wins everything. You know, like... I watch a lot of TV. I think this is a golden age of television. With the streaming and the great shows on Netflix and Amazon and... Uh, Soon to come Disney and uh, Apple. And it's going to be very competitive. And they know that in order to win you over, they're going to have to give you the good stuff. I probably should have shaved if I was going to an award show. So um, it's, a, it's a good time. There's great TV shows out there. Obviously, it was Game of Thrones. They got nominated for everything. You figure they get everything as a, a tip to the cap. because And those two are in different categories because one's a comedy and the other one is a drama. So a lot of people up in arms about who won or who didn't win for Game of Thrones. Amelia Clark, who played Daenerys, didn't get the payoff. And uh, a show no one heard of won all this. I don't know. It was the last year of Veep. It was such a good season. It was such a good season. I don't watch Veep. It's not for me, although I, I can see why it's very good. But that's not what I'm here to talk about. Uh, let's move to the FIFA Football Awards. And Lionel Messi wins best player. I don't think there's any doubt Megan Rapino. She was a sensation in the summer. She was the most famous person in the world for a couple of weeks. That's hard to do in this world. But she did it. Uh, Lionel Messi won. He scored a lot of goals. Wasn't his most productive as a club. And um, I thought Virgil van Dijk, if I had to give a nod, because of what Liverpool did. But this again, this is not what I'm talking about. I could tell you who should have won and who shouldn't have won. But in the end, as I, I'll put a bow on the Emmys. By the way, there are no hosts anymore on these award shows. And I know they talked about it, Stephen Colbert and, and Jimmy Kimmel. So uh, that's unfortunate. That's, that's good jobs. They're joking about it. And they said, maybe they'll get rid of presenters. Maybe. I'd be happy to host any award show. And you, as you can see by full time, I'd do a stand-up job. Stand-up job. But let's look to the football awards. And everyone gets up in arms about all these awards going on. And you know what? You shouldn't have them doesn't matter Amelia Clark's Clark's probably gonna win that wants to win that award but she's gonna count her money and her work and how that show has changed her life and now is a household name and uh, in the footballing space doesn't really matter if you win that award because it's all about winning trophies right and the team sports in particular it's very strange to give individual awards to sport teams because the best team is winning so much more in football soccer these days the craziest one's the Heisman Trophy because that's a sport where players are on the field for half the time. An offensive player is not on the field, and they give an individual award. I think it just tears teams to pieces. So anyway, don't get all bent out of shape. But um, there you have it, award shows. We like to watch it because of the entertainment value. I don't know if there was that much entertainment value. So, All right, I'm going to talk about VAR. <laughs> Uh, I came in again. This time, the detriment of Tottenham Hotspur, who were playing Leicester and were up one zip when they had the uh, a goal disallowed. Uh, everyone celebrated for half an hour. It was. It seemed pretty clear that uh, it was a goal, but it maybe wasn't. So the VAR comes in, takes the goal away, and this is you know behind me. You'll see the minuscule line that we are referring to and i don't know how anyone can do it so this is what i told you this is what it's coming to with var looked at this for about two minutes fine decided he was offside it wasn't a goal and here we are the robots are winning the eye in the sky sees everything and even when it doesn't see anything you know it's going to do its tabulations and say well this is a little further along than that man's body and this man this is the Terminator. This is the Terminator coming to, tr- coming to life. 
okay? The eye in the sky. I can't even figure out what it's seeing, but somehow we've dis- discovered. So, uh, yeah, VAR is low-hanging fruit right now, and uh, we're going to talk about it all the time. And uh, despite the calls are very different in nature, whether it's a whether it's the time it takes or whether it was that eye in the sky or whether it's the right place to call it or it's the handball or not, uh, everything's going to come up and it's going to keep coming up. But this is, I mean, what are we doing? (laughs) Really, what are we doing? By the way, I joked around that eight minutes stoppage time is the new three minutes stoppage time. Remember, they always flash three. Now they always flash eight minutes. So I don't want eight minutes stoppage time. So we're going to talk a little bit about Manchester United. I feel, I think the award show kind of wiped me out a bit. Oh, the ch- not that again. All right, so uh, Manchester United, it was, uh, they lost to West Ham United this weekend. And I was here to talk about West Ham being the, the best club in London right now. The best club, better than Chelsea, better than Arsenal, better than Tottenham Hotspur, better than Watford, better than Charlton, better than Brentford, better than Crystal Palace. But that's not the sexiest news. But West Ham, I'm really impressed. I'm a fan, and I'm, I'm excited about what's happening. And I was made even more so excited about what's happening here because as they played Manchester United, I go, there's no way they're going to lose this. They have a better manager. They have a better striker. They have a better midfield. They better have a, a better defense. West Ham has a lot of goal. You look at the Manchester United squad, I go, oh, we're going to beat these guys. The only thing that they were better at is history and that, that jersey and the badge. So uh, I think this is... And I think Red Devil fans are abundantly aware of this well ahead of me saying it. This is get ready for maybe the worst year of the bunch since Sir Alex Ferguson. Because the talent's not there. And maybe Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is on the chopping block. What difference does it make? Maybe he should be fired. But what difference does he make? No great super coach is A, going to make a huge difference. And B, not want to coach that group of players. Their biggest name player, Paul Pogba, doesn't want to be there. And now you make a statement saying the future is very bright because of all this academy work we've been doing. But what about these poor saps that have to play and deal with that, the weight that is Manchester United? You didn't think about them, did you? Yeah. They might fire Soul Shark because it's something to appease the fans. I don't think it's going to make a, uh, a business. By the way, uh, he, when they did give him the permanent job, he had some nice results on an interim basis. We're all saying, Why? Didn't that, wasn't that a big alarm bell for Manchester United fans saying, why would they hire him? I know he's one of your own, but you're Manchester United and you can hire whomever you want. But that's really changed in a short time. Uh, this is still a very desirable position and it's one of the, it is the most popular club in the world with tons of money. Uh, it's not being run very well. You don't need that. Maybe they're picking other spots where they are being run well, but the main product, the, the first team, is not doing very well at all. So uh, I think you're looking at I'm going to say <laughs> I'm going to say 11th place, but I think it could be lower than that for Manchester United cuz the talent's there and now Marcus Rashford, you wonder what's going on with him. It's bad news. And we won't see them in award shows anytime soon, okay? There you have it. Manchester United, you're going to have to sit and bear it. There's nothing that can be done at this point. There's nothing you can do. There's nothing that can be done. So everyone has to reassess things, including wondering what happens to the manager because it's nothing can be done. The talent's not there. And everyone that you're hoping to have talent is not having a good year. Maybe you can inspire those guys, but I'm just like, it's over. It's over. Please subscribe to Full Time. I hope you enjoyed the rugby. uh, We got a very good response from the uh, rugby Full Time. And uh, I've been watching every game. That's why I'm a little bit punchy because I'm staying up to 4 a.m. to watch them. But it's been great continue to watch it i will do another one of those once we get to the knockout rounds so until then please subscribe see you soon and i'm gonna get this thing off i'm sweating a little bit <laughs>